We worship the God who inhabits our world and indwells our lives. We need not look up to find God. We need only to look around, within ourselves, beyond ourselves, into the eyes of another. We need not listen for a distant thunder to find God. We need only listen to the music of life, the words of children, the questions of the curious the rhythm of a heartbeat. We worship the God who inhabits our world and who indwells our lives. We're so glad you've joined us for worship this morning. You may want to press pause right now and grab a few things you'll find helpful for our worship service. Your Bible, maybe a candle to light, and whatever you have to use as your communion emblems. Once you've gathered what you need, Then unpause, and Pat will lead us into worship together. Will you join me in prayer? At our beginning, God, you created us unique and irreplaceable, loved and wanted by you, known and treasured by you, even before you created us. In all our new beginnings, God, you create something new, so we will seek you in the freshness of this morning, in the laughter of friends, in the colors of creation, and in this beautiful place. God of all creation, open our eyes to see your presence, our souls to sense your presence, and our hearts to love your presence, ever here in your creation and ever beyond it in eternity. Hear us as we pray the prayer Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sin, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Scripture, Genesis 1, 1 through 5, 26 to 31. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, there was morning the first day. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image according to our likelessness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image, in the image of God, he created them male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it 
and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant, healing seed, that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed and its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, there was morning, the sixth day. May God add blessings to the readings, hearings, and understanding of Holy Scripture. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Growing up, I was always told that I looked like my Grandma Ketchin. I never knew her because she passed away many years before I was even born. Nevertheless, I heard all the time I was just like her. She was short. I'm short. She was kind and compassionate. I am kind and compassionate. Well, most of the time. I always felt weird being compared to someone I didn't know, a woman I never met. Now, as I look in the mirror, I see glimpses of my dad, his eyes, his mouth. I have them both. I know I have my dad's wit, his way of being direct, and unfortunately, I have his temper too. Doesn't show up too often, but my German and Irish heritage come to the forefront every once in a while. Then God said, And now we will make human beings. They will be like us and resemble us. Made in the image of God. In the very beginning of our reading from Genesis today, we hear again about a wind from God that creates change out of nothingness. God's spirit swept over the waters and then God spoke. God used language to create all light and then God proclaimed that this creation of light was good. Our scripture reading skips over the creation of the sky, the dry land, vegetation, the sun and the moon, all the creatures and the sea and on dry land. And we went straight to God's creation of humankind. It's here that we discover that we, all of us on the earth, those who have been, those who are here now, and those who are yet to be, were, are, and will be created in the image of God. God says, and now we will make humankind. They will be like us and resemble us. And then it was decided that humankind would have dominion over the earth and all living things. That means we're in charge. We have the power. We are the rulers. We can decide how things are going to go or not. While I believe that uh, is indeed how we have behaved many times. I don't think that's what God had in mind. For God, if you look at the overarching theme found throughout the Bible, it comes down to relationship. Everything is about being in relationship, and it all begins with creation. <coughs> Humankind was given dominion over everything, not to control, but to work with, to nurture, to create, and to love creation, to see creation as good just as God pronounced it so. We were created to be relational beings. 
with God and with all creation. When God creates, things change tremendously. In the beginning, things changed from nothingness into all things, everything that God calls good. When God sent the Holy Spirit, everything changed for the church. We, the church, became part of God's movement in the world. The Holy Spirit breathed into us and connected us one to another. We have inherited this covenantal relationship. In our lesson from Genesis today, the Bible uses the language of the Spirit to express this conviction. It describes the Spirit of God as hovering or resonating over the world as it's being formed and ordered by God's creative word. I believe that from the very beginning, God has been fully present to everyone and to everything in this world. And God remains with us because the Spirit of God still hovers and resonates over and around and in us all. God is good and God seeks us out. He seeks us out to be in relationship. As image of God, Christians are summoned to reflect God's care for the world of creation and for human community. In that calling, we have an example and a model in Jesus, the quintessential image of God. Jesus is the human being as God intended all human beings to be in the beginning. A perfect representation of God to the cosmos. Jesus preached and taught what it meant to be the humans God intended. He showed us by example. He related to humans through story and parable. Our roadmap to perfect humanity is right there in the gospel stories. Do you see it? I came across a meme on Facebook last week that was quite fitting. I even shared it on our Facebook page. And this is what it said. When Jesus said, love your neighbor... He knew your neighbor would act, look, believe, and love differently than you. Jesus taught us what it looked like to be in true relationship with one another, to love and see others as God does. To be made in the image of God means that at our very core, we have been created as good, created to participate in good, created to participate in God's mission here on earth. Do you see God when you look in the mirror? Do you see God when you look at others? Perhaps we need to look beyond our reflection, beyond the physical characteristics of others, and look deep within. That is where you will see we are all, all made in the image of God. When we look out into our world, especially our country right now, We see chaos. We see severed relationships. We see injustices in how we treat one another, in the distribution of resources, in sexism, racism, classism, and all the other isms. We cannot say it is good. As we navigate through this chaotic time in our country, We need to look back at the creation story. Out of chaos, God creates all of creation. 
out of nothing, God creates our world. Out of love, God creates humankind in God's image. It was good. We can find comfort in the creation story. We can be confident that God is still creating and recreating. God can take our chaos that we've created and breathe the spirit into our chaos and create good. That is our word of hope for today. May it be so. Let us be in a spirit of prayer. Architect of the universe, your voice called out over the deep and darkness and brought forth light. Your voice called out over the waters and brought forth life. Your voice called out over this earth and brought forth our very beings. Your voice continues to call out in our universe and bring new hope and new life. Mysterious God, power behind all we see, grace beyond all we know, love before all we meet. We cannot comprehend your majesty. We only know your presence in our lives. You who knew us before we were born, you who will cradle us after our last breath. We cannot encompass your glory. Instead, we marvel at all the works your hands has made, and we worship and adore you. It seems too good to be true that you would care for mere mortals like us in our messy lives, often caught up in trivialities that you would mold us in your own image, social creatures with the divine spark, so good we'd rather not believe, rather not see your image in those around us crying out for love and companionship, rather not see your wisdom underpinning creation, groaning at our wanton waste and exploitation. God above all, Help us with our unbelief, our our incredulity, our self-preserving acts which isolate and harm. Pour mercy into our hearts and souls, giving us eyes to see and ears to hear. Hear your gift in every person, every place, every moment. For your greatness is seen in all the world. May our words and actions be our praise of you reaching up and out into your kingdom. So many are in need of you, God. Your love, your presence, your mercy, your peace. We share with you daily the name, names of those who are close to us, those on our prayer list, There are those we do not know. There are those in our community, our nation, and the world that need you, God. May your presence be known and give them what they need to know that they are loved. Continue to listen to our prayers as we share them now in silence. Almighty God, let us not harbor anything in our hearts that might spoil our fellowship with you or with one another. Work with us and within us. Do what you will with us. Make of us 
what you want of us. Change us as we need changed. Use us as your will requires. In the name of Christ, we pray all these prayers. Amen. As grain that was scattered on the hillside was gathered together and made into one loaf, so too we, scattered at tables in our own homes, are bound together around Christ's table and become one. As grapes grown in the field are gathered together and pressed into wine, so too are we drawn together and pressed by our times to share a common lot and are transformed into Christ's self-giving love for all. Communion is a time when we reflect on what this table means to us. We remember that it began that night in the upper room when Jesus gathered with his disciples around the table. And he took an ordinary loaf of bread and he broke it and blessed it and he said, this bread is for you. Take and eat. Remember me. He took the cup and he lifted it up. He blessed it and he said, This cup is the cup of the new covenant. And this cup is for you. Take and drink. Remember me. As we gather virtually around this table, we remember that all are invited and we remember the promise that when we gather together when we tell the story and give the blessing when we break the bread and drink from the cup we proclaim the Lord's life death and resurrection until he comes again so take eat and drink and remember
as we continue to worship through technology, again, I want to take a moment and say thank you for your continued support during this time through your tithes and offerings. You can continue to donate online via our website at www.fccravenna.org or mail your check to 6251 Gladys Street in Ravenna or utilize bill pay through your banking institution. God has abundantly bestowed upon us the gift of life. Our best response is to offer our whole lives as agents for God's mission in the world. Give as you are able to build the community of God in our homes, our congregation, and around the world. Let us pray. Receive these gifts, even our very lives for your service. Multiply them and our effort to meet the need. We are yours, God. Use us, we pray. Amen. God calls us from this time of worship to share the hope of abundant life in the presence of hardship, relationship that transcends the barriers of isolation, and to do what we can where we are, to be the body of Christ. The love of God, the grace of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit goes with you and before you today and every day. Go in peace. Silently now.